There are many ways to advertise on Amazon. In this video, I will be talking about offensive product ASIN targeting. This is the My Amazon Guy uh, video. My name is Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy. Um, so this is a campaign I've previously created and very basic setup. We've got some data here. Um, so we're targeting a category and we're targeting very specific ASINs. So I'm gonna show you on the front end what this equates to first. So if we were to look at a random product similar to ours, so I'm gonna talk, look at a competitor Mama Shark wine glass. And here, when you scroll down, you can see this row for sponsored products related to this item. So my product is this one and it's showing up in this row as well as this row right here. These are both advertised. So if I was to click on this or any one of these, it would cost one of those competitors um, at least 50 cents, sometimes as much as a dollar in this particular category. So that's where these are showing up. The reason why you want to do this is when you have a product that you feel like competes well against a particular ASIN or conditions. So this product, well-received products got five stars it's got lots of ratings 136 reviews and it's cheaper than mine chances are i'm gonna lose to this product if i advertise here but we're testing to see if that's the case so you make a hypothesis you test it then you let the data decide so on the back end we've targeted some select asins notice how these ones aren't getting any data that just means that these asins probably aren't getting a lot of traffic to begin with, even though the bids are above the averages, they're not getting impressions. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, just means that at this point in time, those products aren't really doing well, so they're not getting traffic and, what, and, and you're not showing your ads. Um, so it's okay to leave those on. We've got a category target here, and initially when I launched this, I had a higher bid. ACOS was really high. I've pulled the bid back. It's starting to produce at a better rate, not quite yet there. This is a very small spend campaign. Offensive targeting is not necessarily your main strategy when it comes to sponsored products, but it can be effective. And for select clients at My Amazon Guy, we get some really stellar results. But it's not for every client, not for every business, very select. So you got to be choosy on how you set this up. So let's, let's go through an actual setup on how to set up offensive uh, campaign targeting. So this is a sponsored product test. So you hit continue here. And I recommend that you always title your campaigns in a way that makes sense to you personally because if you're going to segment out your campaigns you need to know how each one of them is doing i would title this one offensive product targeting and then if you're only going to do this for select SKUs, i would put the reference of it so let's say this is mama shark for example okay you can create a portfolio where you manage things you probably don't need that unless you've got more than 30 campaigns um, daily budget. This is a small campaign. You know, if, if you're rolling anything short of thirty thousand a month, ten dollars a day on this campaign is probably about right. You're going to select manual targeting, and then here, um, I always recommend the dynamic bid up and down. We have run some A/B tests, and we found that it does perform better by about thirty percent over the down only option, and that thirty percent is a pickup of additional sales as well as some moderate increases, uh, a better A cost. Okay, go down to the settings here. I'm gonna target uh, pretty much, I always, almost always have my same ad group names as I do for campaigns, unless I'm gonna have multiple ad groups under one campaign. Um, back in the day, we used to create super big campaigns and then lots of ad groups. Today though, we've generally are creating more campaigns and shallow ad groups. And that's just based on the algorithm changes for how campaigns are managed these days uh, within the Amazon ecosystem. So we'll just uh, do the same thing. So, you know, target, offensive target targeting uh, mama shark okay select the product you're going to want to do this for so i'm going to select my my shark product come in here and add it you can add multiple variations but when it comes to offensive targeting you want to be very tailored do not do a, a shotgun approach on this don't dump a bunch of products in at the same time that's definitely not what you want to do you want to be very tailored that this one asin is going to target this group of other asins Okay, so we're doing keyword targeting and then, uh, actually, excuse me, we're doing product targeting. And here, um, depending on what category you're in, you can select the actual um, category. I recommend doing this. Not a lot of people do it. You hit target and then you can refine it though. 
And so let's say that my item, you know, costs 1250. Well, I don't want to advertise on items that cost less than 1250 because I know that my item is less likely to get a good advertising result from that. So I'll come in here and type in 1299 to 25, right? So what this does is it hits the whole category of related products um, without hitting things that are outside of the common uh, metric that a typical buyer who's going to buy a $12.50 wine glass with a funny saying, you know, they're not looking for a $40 wine glass. They're looking for a $13 to $25 wine glass. Additionally, if we roll out the items that are cheaper than mine, I'll have better performance. Now down here, you can look at the actual review star ratings. So if you don't want to hit somebody that's got five star reviews, change that down to four and you can see, boom, I'm only going to hit about 300 products, um, 300 to 400 products right there. And that's going to be uh, very helpful to narrow down your search. Category targeting uh, does not work in every category. You, you have to test it out and see what happens, put some spend on it. Um, but then, um, so if I add that target here, see how it's different than the unfiltered version. So it's ironically, they're suggesting a higher bid for the, for the less filtered. Usually it's the opposite. Um, and you'll have to bid higher when you, when you focus it in a lot more. All right. So we'll remove that one. Okay. Uh, you don't need to worry about negative product targeting at this point, but you can exclude targeting your own brands. That actually makes sense. You don't want to necessarily do an offensive product target on your own. Uh, products. However, we do have campaigns that are sometimes built for defensive uh, targeting, and that's where you purposely hit your own products, but you want to put a lower bid on those typically, and that's because um, you don't necessarily want people shifting between your products when it costs you money. You would rather them do that through the parentage. For example, um, if we go over to uh, my product here, we'll look it up through the brand store. Um, by the way, that's called a pretty URL or vanity URL. Uh, we do build brand stores at my Amazon guys, a heads up. So if we go over the Mama uh, Mama Shark page and we scroll down to the A-plus content, we also build out A-plus content for our for our clients. We charge 500 bucks for that. If you go to myamazonguy.com, you can purchase that right on the website. Um, so down here, you can see this is the A-plus content where we've got a product grid. So I'd rather people click here to go to the Grandma Shark or the Grandpa Shark or the Papa Shark instead of paying money to do so in the ads here because down here in the A-plus content, this is free. These offensive ASINs are not. They're not free. All right, so that's why you'd want to do def defensive uh, potentially, though, or offensive potentially. So let's go back here, and now we're going to go to the individual products. So let's say um, you really hate that one guy out there that sells a competing product, and you just want to take him to task, and you know that ASIN will just come in here and enter that list, type that ASIN in, boom, done. You could also look at the suggested and just kind of peruse this. This, this depending on how much, how many sales your product has. If you've got north of 50 sales on the item, this should be pretty solid to give you a suggested list. You could come in here and look at this product by product. Okay. Otherwise, you could come in here and search. So if I just wanted to hit everything that has a mama shark in the title, I could do so like this. Notice my own product comes up, and then also random things like uh, party supplies and T-shirts and stuff. So so somebody who's going to buy um, a party supply for Baby Shark probably will not purchase the wine glass. Um, so I may not target that. But you never know. Sometimes you test it out and see what happens. Somebody that bought, buys the T-shirt, though, however, very well may want to buy my product. So you may select those. So you hit those targets. Whatever you decide, um, you can come in here and customize the bid. Now, it's very cheap to advertise on select products, which is why offensive targeting can sometimes be beneficial. Um, and you can select that and bid there. Once you've done this, all you have to do is hit that launch campaign button and you're off to the races. Um, and the last thing I want to cover is basically uh, if you're going to, uh, if you're comparing this against, say, keyword targeting, right? So if I wanted to target funny wine glass with saying something like that, right? This search term here will allow me to show up in this search. What we talked about in this video is not for search. It's for product detail page placement. Those are two separate strategies. We'll, we cover um, keyword targeting in other videos. And, and so very, very different strategy. Just make sure I make that very clear. Your offensive targeting is when you're purposely showing up on the detail page of select products and has nothing to do with keywords whatsoever. So those are two unique strategies. Definitely check out one of our other videos on the keyword strategy uh, component. And then finally, um, if you've enjoyed this tutorial but you're not sure how to run this yourself, go over to myamazonguy.com 
and we do uh, run advertising management for our clients. We actually post our strategy flat out right here on the page. So if you're curious, you know, how to run an advertising strategy, you need some segmentation advice, we, we post it right here and explain how we do all that right on the website. And you can, you can contact us at Get Started Now, and it, and it will contact us and give us your information so we know how to support you. And just let us know, uh, you know, how, how, much, uh, how much you're spending in advertising, and we can tell you, um, you know, how much it would cost to manage that on your behalf. And we'd be happy to do so. It's definitely one of our top services. We have a lot of great impact. We come in and lower a cost for you, so you save money on your advertising. And then additionally, um, we'll go out and do a lot of discovery for new acquisition to grow your sales. At the end of the day, you want to grow your sales by driving more traffic to your listings and improving conversion rates. So if you've got all the conversion covered, you got A plus content up, got all the good stuff then you need to start focusing on advertising, which is why you found this video and you're looking for new techniques. Um, definitely set up a chat time to chat with us. We'll see if we can be a good fit for you. Thanks for watching guys. Feel free to, you know, if you have a particular type of, of advertising technique you want me to cover in a video, this particular one came by request on one of our other videos. And so we'll definitely go out there and spend some time showing you how each one of our techniques is done. And we appreciate you watching. Thanks.